Hello. Today we'll be we will be performing test 2.4.3 from the D5 receiver CTS. This test, data lane HSRX T HS settle value, is used to verify that the DUTS data lane receiver incorporates a sufficient timeout interval to ignore transition effects that may occur during the HS entry sequence. Open on my desktop, I have two things. To the right, I have the Introspect ESP software that usually comes when you purchase the SV3C generator from us. On the left, I have access to the oscilloscope to which my generator is connected to. I'm using the program VNC Viewer to display signals seen on the scope. To give you an idea about my setup, my machine is connected to the Introspect D5 generator via USB 2 cable, and I am connecting a MXP cable from the generator connector to the four channels on the scope. Depending on your setup, channel one and two are outputting the data lane and channels three and four are the clock lane. I'm using the scope to be able to see the signals coming from the generator. In your case, the generator will be connected to your DUT. The software is easy to use and robust. There are three main tabs that you may use. You have the params tab, log, and results. For the generator, the main tabs you will be using are the params and the log. Params is used for adding components and developing your procedure, which can be very basic commands. In the log, we can see all the information and data coming from the unit. For example, we see a statement for connection. The log tab is good for debugging. Now using the introspect software, I will open the DeFi receiver CTS application, which is an application already developed for you. To begin the test, the generator must be powered on. Then we click run. Now we have the different CTS tests that we can pick from. We are going to select test 2.4.3 from the buttons provided. So the first test to be run is the nominal test. This is a nominal test we are doing to make sure your setup is good and that the duck can see the signal. We can see here Right now, I can see the nominal pattern playing on the scope. So I need to click on yes. And now we are beginning the CTS test. First, we are setting the THS settle to 54 nanoseconds. So let's see that on the scope. and a false leader sequence is placed at 109 UI before SOT, which we can see on the scope as well. Because I can see the pattern on the scope with the correct THS settle duration, I will click yes and we will continue. The THS settle duration will be incremented and we will see it again at 70 nanoseconds. So now at 70 nanoseconds, let's check our scope again. And we can see that it is indeed 70 nanoseconds. So I will continue clicking yes. We're going to check again at 90 nanoseconds. So now at 90 nanos, it should be at 90 nanoseconds. 
and we can see on the scope that it is. So that's good. And let us assume that our dot does not see the 91 nanoseconds. So I, oh, but it does. Sorry, but at 92 that it doesn't. So let us say no. But as per the CTS specification, this is a pass because the minimum value has to be 91. So let's try running this test again. And we can see once again that we're playing um, the nominal test, which is just playing a pattern. So yes. Let us assume I am testing with another DUT. And when I send THS settle 54, it is conformant. Yes, we see the pattern without errors, but at 55 nanoseconds, let us assume that we are getting errors. So we want to say no. Well, then in this case, we get a failure as per the CTS specification, saying that the THS settle is smaller than the required minimum of 91 nanoseconds. This failure is expected because that is what the specification requires. Thank you. That was our demo for today. Thank you for watching and have a great day.